Okay, I have no idea where that clip went to. It dropped straight down. How far could it go? Obviously a long ways. Okay, so I got a whole bunch of clips here, so I got plenty to choose from. So here's another clip. So we're going to show so much this time. So I'm going to do, I'm going to try to put over the top of the shaft there. We're going to rotate this 180 over. <coughs> so that, <coughs> excuse me, so this groove will not be where the keyway is. Now a lot of times I get this to pop on about halfway, and then I'll use my screwdriver to push down the rest of the way. You do not want to overexpand this clip any more than you have to, because once they're overbent, they don't squeeze back and be tight on the shaft. If they're not tight on the shaft, I rebend the clips and I put them back on again. You can do that a couple times, max, and they break. So probably won't be able to see very much, but oh well. I can either videotape or I can work. I can't do both all the time. Sharp edge, this is that way, so that goes out. So now I can do this. Okay, <clears throat> got it on there, Let's see if it's tight, it is not very tight, it's floating around, so it's over bent. So that means it's no good. It's about as hard to get them off as going on. Okay, so you try to get them in there. Okay, back off. So you see that gap between the sides of it now? Right there, that's oversprung. So that'll never seal up now. So now I gotta rebend it. So take a little pair of channel locks. <clears throat> and bend it. First thing I do is I bend it this way. I do three bends on these. Bend it down a little bit. I bent it right here. Squeeze it down that direction. Don't get too carried away, it'll break. So we keep doing this here, that looks good that way. Now I take it and I bend it this other way, because right now it's oval. We bend it about this way here. Hmm. Nice mosquito. Mosquito's on the back of the camera trying to bite me. Oh boy. Okay, now you got this here. Okay, when it'll start to overlap like that, you bent it enough. So that's three ways of bending it. So now the whole circle is small all the way around. I'm going to go back this way. And we put this back on. Like this. And now we do it again. Go on. So I keep bending it up, 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 and then I go on. The mosquito's trying to get me over here. Stupid mosquito. Okay, I got the clip partially, but not all the way. That's on partially right now. Now I just roll it on my screwdriver. Try to put on the rest away without losing it. Of course, the longer you let it sit like this, the more chance it has to fall off. So just put 
Put my finger back in there. Here we go, pop. I had to push the shaft here because I was pushing on the other side. There you go, that goes on the rest of the way. Okay. Now let's see if it's tight. See how I'm not spinning. So I'm actually trying to pop over, trying to move the clip. So now the clip is in there tight. Yep. So that's what you want to be nice and snug like that. Make sure it's in the groove all the way around. You see how the keyway is way over here? Nowhere near the gap on my snap ring is at. Snap ring gap is way over there. So I'm not quite 180 from it, but I can slip it over a little bit. Get it close to being 180. Just hold my tool there and slip the key over. Yeah, it definitely is on there tight. So usually I gotta do that on all the snap rings and make them tight. Because they don't make them adequately tight. I've never had one that the ones like that have a problem. I've had the other ones where they're spinning around and come off or the key would go up through the end of the hole and you lose your oil pressure. Not a good sign. Okay, after you get all of that done, let me go ahead and put the pump together here. Where's my bolts at? That one right there. come from these are the kids tools not mine see my tools are different he lost all his tools out of his toolbox yesterday he said so here's one more he didn't lose you'll be happy So far, none of mine are missing, I know of. That would be the uh, blue turd pan head. Okay, center up the clearance here in the pump. So that means the oil should be lined up when you do that. Tighten it down a little bit. Okay, now. If you have no oil holes come out the top, or bottom in this case, top, this goes on this way, you have excess tightenings, but right now this is going to cover up something, I imagine. So we're going to make sure these are good and tight right now, because you probably want to have access to them again. <clears throat> we're going to give it the final torque right now. <clears throat> final torque. That means you torque the piss out of it. Okay. Now we take this one here, which has the gasket already installed, remember? Right on here. Try to get the bolts through there first before you touch anything. The gasket should be dry enough now, it shouldn't matter, but it's just a habit I get into. And if you have to beat on or force it, there's something wrong. Stop and fix it. Bring them in partially the way, but not all the way. Get all the bolts started. Okay. Now line up the cover so it lines up best with the pump. The way it looks the best. Then bring it down. Yeah, I'm using an X pattern here for torque. Okay, it feels pretty good. I'm going to torque it down. Okay, I'll do it one more time. Full torque. Let 
Anybody wants to know how tight that is? It's it's whatever I can pull with a little mini ratchet going like this. Probably quite a bit. Okay, now the last thing I want to do is make sure the oil pump works. So if you can rotate the gear down here nice and easy, that's a good sign. That one appears to be working. That's really good. <clears throat> so now you go ahead and move it over here. We've got to hook up the oil pump to the shaft here. So we got to put the two keys here onto the shaft. These are the keys, these big half moon ones here. You can see those are not. These ones just fit in there loose, that's why they're not in there already. Can you put the oil pump drive gear on there? So you got a big bevel on one side, flatness on the area other, the bevel goes in. Some pumps have bevel on both sides, so the bevel goes to the inside. Same deal, you have to hold the key a little bit to find the spot where it goes. Right there is where the key goes. Now once you engage the key, it won't go on because it's engaging with the oil pump gear below. <clears throat> so you can see how the key is partially in right down there. And then we're hitting on the gear over here. So if you rotate the crankshaft, it will go on. Now if you rotate it forward, it'll suck the gear to the inside. If you go backwards, it'll pull it out. So depending on what you turn the crank, it does different things. So if you go forward, see how it just sucks the gear right in there? Like that. And it turns the pump just like you want it to. Now if you go backwards, it unscrews the gear. So keep going the same direction, be fine. Okay, so that's all appears to be working. Okay, now we got a spacer right here. Goes on. This one has to be metal. We got another key right here. Goes on. We got our gear that has the key on it. Find the spot where it goes, slide it on. That went on easy. Then we got our nut right here. Goes on like that. <clears throat> so this nut has a flat on it and takes this tool here to work it. That's how you tighten it up. And you let people borrow your tools, they just screw them up for you. Some genius didn't realize this was a left-handed thread. So he broke my tool. Factory Harley cat. Dumbass. <clears throat> you can't buy any more of these, so I had to fix it. <clears throat> this is a left-handed thread, so you loosen it to tighten. It's moving as tight. It appears to be tight. Now, this is not my good zip gun either, so. <coughs> so you have to deal with it. Alright, so that's on there now. Now I can rotate it backwards and it stays back there. Goes both directions, no problem. Okay. So last thing I want to do, I want to put a little bit of oil on those teeth there, so they don't run dry. It'll take a while for the oil pump to build up pressure before that gets lubricant on there, so get it pre-lubed right now. Okay, there you go, that one's in there. Okay, and the last thing on the oil pump is to put the stuff over here on this side. Where it belongs. All right. So I'm going to get my impact driver here to cure a bit. I need my adapter, which is on my other tool. What do I do with it? What do I do with it? There it is over here. 
Here's my adapter I need. Half inch drive to 3 8 drive. So my impact knocker tight inside. Good to go. Okay, so I put a little bit of oil down the holes here. A little bit on that one. A little bit on that one. Now that would drain down into the oil pump galleries down there and lubricate those gears some more down there. So when you start the bike up, there's actually oil on the teeth. If you have oil on the teeth when you start it, it'll suck air through the pump and go through most of the time. If you just have air down there, it'll just rotate and it'll just cavitate and it won't suck any air. So it won't draw vacuums so and the oil will flow in. So you can run a bike with no oil for a while if you're not careful. Okay, this is the ball bearing that came out, so you just drop it in the hole. Goes on the, that side. This is our plunger, pressure side. Goes right in there. This is our light duty spring, goes over here on this one. Okay. So I'm gonna figure out which one is the worst looking. Yeah, it's a toss up. I'm thinking this one here, but this one looks worse on the outside. Kind of a toss up. I'll put this on the inside. So the next one here. And our screen, right here. Now this goes in there like this. The spring pushes on this. This is actually a sealing flange. It seals at the bottom of the case. So the oil filter actually works. If you put it in like that, it doesn't do anything. And that is not a good sign when it doesn't fit inside the case. That's a bad sign. It's not very good at all. So, appears to be a little bit too big in diameter. Won't go. So, what diameter is the spring? The spring did go in, kind of. It's about 416, 417. 436, that's nowhere going to work. So we need one with smaller diameter or we need to grind this down a little bit until it fits. So it's pretty far off. So I guess the easiest thing to do is see if we got another one that'll work. Chances are it'll probably be the same problem. You never know. This one came out of an SNS case. This is an SNS part. Who knows how they made it? Okay, let's go see if we can find a Harley one to use. Or at least a reproduction one for a Harley. It's better to find the good parts that work. Alright, oil pump crap. Uh, right here is one right there, I can see it. Mr. Gary Bang. That's from the 90s, in case you don't know who Gary Bang is. He has a Harley dealership up in California. Okay, here's a new style one. Oh, look at that. Same problem. What a shocker. So Ultima got a little lazy on their threading. Okay, so... That means I can either ream that out a little bit, which I don't really want to do at all. Because that can cause some chips to go inside our motor. Or i got to grind this thing down. Now, is there just a lip on there, or is it actually a problem? I'm guessing there's a problem. Right now the oil holes are open, so you can blow it out. don't really want to do it that way. Okay, this is what, 437, I think is what it was. That sounds like 716 to me. Yep, 437, 436. Let's see if we can find an reamer. 716. 
4375, see? Seven sixteenths, see? Mark down there, see? Right there. Dad tools, he marked everything. He was pickier than I was. Or he had more free time. Which one was it? Okay, let's see what this feels like in the hole here. Feels like there's a burr in there. Gone now. See the aluminum on there? Just enough to be a problem. I'm going to blow this out. We want the stuff to go this direction, preferably not over on the motor side. So take nasty, dirty rag, make an air dam, cover up the crank over here also, and put a shield like this so it blows in my face. I don't think those worked. A little bit. Didn't really see any chips anywhere, but obviously you don't want those anywhere in your motor. Okay. Maybe it'll fit now. Oh, look at that. Works like a champ. Put that away later. So what happened was, when they tapped out the case, the, dull, the tap's a little bit dull, and it pushed the metal up and bill mouthed in front of the metal. So it pushed it down and collapsed it a little bit. Left a burr, and that's why this wouldn't go in the hole. So, so a little minor problems. Now, it goes in there like it's supposed to. Now, if you were to beat that thing in there, you would collapse the screen and cause lots of damage, I'm sure. That would be called a production defect. Oh, well. That's nothing's ever a bolt-on. Okay, so now... Tighten this up. Some hammer impact, so it takes a hammer. Two hits is enough. It'd be hard to get that out. I'd rather have it be hard to get out than loose. Okay, everything's back to where it should be. Looking good. So all the parts are in there. All right, so now I'm gonna do the cam cover. Be back in a second.